Hi guys, Lightspeed Sound here. My special guest, the Hedge Knight. Hello. Uh, and we are here because a whole bunch of my friends and my followers have been posting a whole bunch of really, really alarmist shit about Donald Trump and how he's basically going to put the entire world into a nuclear apocalypse and we're all going to end up living like Kevin Costner in Waterworld. First off, we are not saying that Donald Trump being president is a good thing. It's, it's, it's not good. But our point is, there are precautions within the Constitution of the United States and within military law to make sure that Waterworld does not become a reality. Thus, we would like to present Don't Panic or How I Learned to Love the Bomb. For a little background, as everybody knows, I am a lawyer and Hedge Knight comes from a military family and has an interest in military history. The first thing that you have to realize is that becoming the President of the United States does not mean that you automatically gain access to some weird men in black futuristic military bunker where you flash your ID to Earl the security guard and you automatically get access to a big red button that launches the world into a nuclear winter. Uh, the nuclear program was designed as a deterrent against a first strike from the, the former Soviet Union or other enemies that may use it. But the difference between first strike and defense. Uh, a first strike option is one where the United States is the first to use a nuclear weapon. A retaliatory or second strike scenario is when we are retaliating against weapons being used against us. Under international law, there's a long history of determining what counts as appropriate retaliatory force. Retaliatory force is essentially the same thing as self-defense, where it has to make sense. You cannot blow up a ship just because it crossed into your waters. The thing that people are most panicking about when it comes to Donald Trump is the fact that they think he is going to initiate a first strike when it comes to nuclear weapons, right? Correct. Yes. Because we all know he's really fucking crazy. Right, so say you take Kim Jong-un and you put him in a DM to Donald Trump and then one of them says something about the other one's socks and next thing you know, we have, like, Armageddon. I don't know about Korean law, but as far as American law with first strikes... The way that it works, if the president decides to have a first strike, there is a two-man rule. The president is the only one that can decide upon the use of nuclear weapons, but the Secretary of Defense has to authorize it and get the machinery rolling on making it happen. The president decides that he wants to bomb somebody. He has to do three things. He has to inform the Secretary of Defense so that the Secretary of Defense can authorize it. He has to uh, verify that he is who he is using something called the biscuit, which is a code card he has on him. And he has to open up the nuclear football, which is a briefcase containing both authentication codes and an a la carte menu of places to bomb and how to bomb them. All of that gets sent to Strategic Command in the Pentagon, and from that point onward, it is a couple of minutes before the missiles or bombs are actually launched or dropped. However, the important part of that is that it has to be okayed by the Secretary of Defense. The Secretary of Defense is what we call a cabinet member. A cabinet member of the president is a direct executive officer, meaning that there is nobody in the chain of command between the president and the Secretary of Defense. Under United States a Code, uh, the Secretary of Defense is appointed by recommendation of the president uh, with the approval of the Senate, meaning they have that big committee and they talk about whether or not they want to approve him. Now, when it comes to firing him, which is very important, the president could fire uh, any direct executive officers at any time because they are cabinet members, because there is nobody between him and the Secretary of Defense. He is the Secretary of Defense's direct boss in the chain of command. Now, could President Trump essentially fire his executive officer and then decide to get a new person in there immediately? Yes, because there is a chain of a succession because in times of war, people get assassinated. However, or blown up. Or blown up. Or just regular Well, kids. assassinated is like, I think assassinated covers blown up. Well, there's being destroyed in a nuclear strike and then there's being directly assassinated by a right. foreign agent. Right. People die. People die unexpectedly. Just like how the president has the vice president to go through when the president like gets assassinated unexpectedly, the Secretary of Defense has the same type of chain of succession. Essentially, there's a list of inferior officers who are then appointed in times of need as 
the Secretary of Defense. However, if the president wants to deviate from that, he can, provided he deviates within the United States law, which, as I said, in the United States Federal Code, determines that anyone that he has to appoint has to be approved by the Senate. Which means, yes, in theory, President Trump could get the nuclear codes, verify who he is, talk to the Secretary of Defense, and if the Secretary of Defense says no, could fire him and go through the entire chain of command in one night. And then, and then we get it and it launches. But that would take a lot of work. And let's be real here, that would probably not happen. Plus, if you also look at Article 4 of the 25th Amendment, you will see that the vice president has the power to declare the president unfit for office. So in the event of Trump getting into a late night tweet war and wanting to launch the nuclear codes, the secretary of defense could inform the vice president and the vice president could have Donald Trump declared unfit. Which, say what you will about Mike Pence, but he's been around for a while and I doubt he would want to kill all of the unborn babies in Korea with a nuclear bomb. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Don't panic. Eat a whole bunch of chocolate. Drink a whole bunch of wine. If you want to do all that at the same time, there's this stuff called Choco Vine. Um, and in the meantime, keep calm. And carry on. And carry on. Mm -hmm.